Hello everyone and welcome back to another Astroneer video, once again in the Rails update that recently just came out, and today I'm going to be talking about automating some of these rail stations. Now in the previous video I did talk about some interesting phenomena that can happen with the train and some of the cable pins and whatnot, so this is in the midst of all of those issues or bugs or whatever you want to call them, and I figured it would be a good idea to talk about automating things because a rail station to an outpost, an A to B train, is really not that difficult to do. However, having multiple stops along the way, like an A to a B to a C and then back again, can be very difficult to manage. So hopefully today I can show you all the things that you need to know to do that yourself. Starting off with something a little bit simpler, what we have here is a single ended rail stop. So this means that there's not a rail that goes completely through. And this is an instance if we have a rail station right next to an auto extractor, which is loading up a storage item with any amount of resources. And this storage sensor that's on here is going to act as our trigger of whether we want to either call the rail car or whether we want to send it back to our main hub. And we do that by using two two input AND gates. So if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you will recognize these features. Here we have the right branch, which is whether we want to call the car. The first switch is, do we want to call it? Yes, it's open. The second switch is our enable of actually sending the call through. On the other side, we have the switch for, do we want to send the rail car home? It is currently closed. And then this one here is once again, our enable of, we actually want to send the call through. So this all starts based on the storage sensor. When this storage becomes full, we trigger a delay repeater on 15 ticks because we do need a delay because of the funky behavior that I've noticed with these rail stations, as I mentioned before. And then we open up our enables and whichever switch is open, either the send or the call, we then trigger that power sensor. So this power sensor closes back off our enables as we've done hundreds of times because we want this to be resettable. We want this to run multiple times without having to be manually reset. And then we also trigger our rail station, which is the call function. Now this is again, how we can call the train to this position by putting a cable pin on the rail station. Fairly self-explanatory so far. Once the train actually gets here, it will completely take up all of these resources, assuming again it's empty, which based on how I've designed this rail is the case. And when that happens, we will trigger the enables again. They will open back up. However, the reason that this delay repeater is on a five cycle delay as opposed to a 15 cycle delay is because this happens pretty much instantaneously. However, when the train reaches this end position, we will trigger our smaller delay repeater. That's what this little cable pin here does. So when we trigger this delay repeater after five ticks, we actually swap these two switches. So when the train has arrived, we turn off the need to call the train and we turn on the need to send the train home. And then after the remaining 10 cycles, once we have absorbed all of the resin, we are then capable of opening up our enable and sending the train home. And we do that with this power sensor here that once again, turns off our enables we trigger the cable pin at the far left of the station that sends the train off in the left direction. And we also switch these back to their original positions because now that we have sent the train off, the next time we have this power sensor, the storage sensor, excuse me, triggered, it will be to trigger the call feature. So we will call the train back using this channel here. And that's why we need to switch them after we are done sending the train. And we can see this happen by placing this last little piece of resin on here. After 15 ticks, we will trigger this pathway. The train is on its way. This happens pretty much instantaneously. So five ticks, then 15, and we send it on back on its way. And once again, everything has been reset exactly as we need to. The switch is on, all these other switches are off. Our power sensor is waiting for the storage to fill again. And we have a perfectly working single-ended train automation. Now in the example that we just showed, that talked about doing a single ended rail post. And that's fine, but it's a little bit difficult to have a rail station at every single thumper that you need. So because of that, I am proud to introduce my design for a two directional, as many stops as you want, I have another one test down there, rail station to call and dispense trains. Now it looks a little bit complicated, but I'm very excited to share this because this is one of the first times I'm actually using the large sensor rings. These sensor rings trigger whenever a player or a vehicle travels through them. The train, however, does not count 
to trigger these sensor rings. Instead, I pretty geniusly, if I so toot my own horn, attached a package tractor to the front of the train because a package tractor does trigger the sensor hoop. So I can use that on the front of a train to trigger these sensor hoops and get the behavior that I need. And the reason I do that is because these individual rail posts, when you call a train to them, do trigger these sensor pins that are on them. However, the problem is that even if it triggers this rail post, you don't know if the train stopped at this rail post or continued going. And because of that, there's a lot of mismatches and behavior that you can run into that's pretty complicated to deal with. So I found the simplest way to do it is just to have rail or large sensor rings on either sides of the rail posts that told you where the train is. So getting into a little bit of the circuitry, you see some similar stuff where you have two two input AND gates, and then you have another two input AND gate over here. So starting on this side, this determines where the train is. So currently, each of these two switches up top determine if the train is on that side of the track, which I'll call the left, or on this side of the track, which I'll call the right. So because the train is currently on the left side, this switch is open. If the train were to go through the sensor ring, it will actually turn this switch off so the train is no longer on that side of the track. And if it goes through this sensor ring, it will turn this switch on, which means that the train is now on that side of the track. And every time the sensor ring triggers, it'll flip the switch, which is perfect. That tells us exactly where the train is. And then when we have our auto extractor full, note that I don't have any other storage on here. It is just the storage sensor. Then it will trigger our second switch, which is once again acting as our enable. So when the train is on a certain side and we have our enable triggered, we then basically call the train. So if the train is on the left side, I trigger to call it to the right rail post. And when the train is on the right side of the track, I trigger to call it to the left rail post. And the reason I do that is because regardless of which side it's on, I can make sure that the storage of the train is right in the center. If it's on the left side, I call the front of the train here so that the storage winds up here. And if it's on that side, I call the train here so the storage ends up right in the middle in perfect position for the auto arm, which is key. And I'll get to that in a moment. Now these power sensors also, again, turn off our enable as we have done before. And this one also turns off our enable as I've talked about before but they also impact this other side. You'll note that these guys go to the second switch on this side. So let's talk about what's going on over here. This is a fancy little reset circuit that I have designed. So this first switch is actually open because when this power sensor triggers, it's gonna turn off the switch initially because we are currently calling the train. When the train gets here, we don't want the reset to, we don't want the reset to occur. Then when the train arrives, we trigger these power sensors and this switch opens up. So we have the first switch off and the second switch open. What condition opens this back up? Well, when the auto extractor is completely unloaded, then we open this second switch back up. And the reason that we do that is because this allows us to send the train back home. And we can do that by triggering this power, uh, this power sensor, which in turn triggers this delay repeater. And that delay repeater is going to call the train to this. So if we called the train to here, we then call the train back in this direction. You might wonder why do we do that? Well, a train, when it's triggered with a proximity send repeater, which we have here, will go in the direction of its last send. So if we called it from the left side to this right pylon, and then we trigger the train, it will continue to move to the right. Instead, by calling the train to this left sensor post, if it came from the left side, it will go here, then it will be called back momentarily, and then it will be sent completely on its way. If it came from this side, it won't even move a second time, it'll just stay in its exact position, and then when we trigger it, it'll go on its way, in either case, back towards our main hub, which is exactly what we want to do. And then I do have a little bit of extra fancy reset because this guy does need to turn off these power switches again because we end up triggering this a second time because of the storage sensor. So yada, 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 you get the point. But again, after we trigger our rail post, we wait a little bit and then send the train back in the direction. But as per usual, I'm sure you guys want to see this in action. So let me duplicate a little bit of resin. That'll grab one from the auto arm. And we will see that the second I place this on, the storage will become full we will call the train to this right rail post, 
When it arrives, we will unload the auto extractor. The auto extractor. It will fill up the train, and once the auto extractor is empty, we will call the train back to here, wait a moment. That moment generally has to do with the final placement of the auto arm, and then we will send the train back home using this proximity repeater. And there it goes, right on back to its home base. Now I know this is a little bit complicated, but even still, I thought it was fun to put together. It was a cool little challenge to build a nice little circuit. Does this have any practical case? I don't know. It might be too complex for the average player to build, but I'm okay with that. It was still fun to do. It was still a cool challenge. It works very well, as I'm sure you can tell. Sent the train right on back to base as anticipated. And you can do this with any number in a line. You could do it on that one. You could have multi-stop. You could do three stops, four stops, five stops, however many you wish. But I just wanted to show that it is possible. The limits of Astroneer circuitry are endless, as this is a complete Turing-tested game. So yeah, that kind of wraps it up for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing some interesting automation tactics. And stay tuned for the next video, hopefully coming out soon. Take it easy, everyone. Have a rest of your day, evening, and or night. And we'll see you all very soon.